Um, and people will probably join in with us, but welcome to Lifeboat, everybody. This is episode uh, three of Lifeboat. Today we have three amazing contestants from Wahai. Teachers uh, uh, right here in front of you, as you can see on your screen. Uh, before we get started, we have a icebreaker. Uh, literally, I put an icebreaker ship. Uh, type in the chat if your name, and if you were to go out to eat, what restaurant would you go out to, and what would you have at that restaurant? So that's your icebreaker question today. So in the chat, uh, type your name and what food, where, where would you go, and what food? Oh, Cracker Barrel. Ooh. I just became so Southern in that text. Yes, you did. Spaghetti factory pasta. Good job. What man. type of pasta, Mila? What type of sauce? Um, I don't know. Oh, Wall Wall Steak Company steak. Mm -hmm. Japanese steakhouse. I've never been to the Japanese steakhouse. Is it good? Shoot. Yeah, it's pretty good. Man, I got I got to convince my wife I need to get out there. I've only been there twice, but the the food was really really good. Cool. The one in cool. Tri Cities is also really really good. Really? Yamas, so delicious. The sushi sushi would be great too. Yeah. For some, for some strange reason, I craving China to forget me now. I don't know why. But oh, you do? It's a, it's that's what I chose, too. Yeah, yeah. I, I I only go there when my wife doesn't know. So that's that's my... <laughs> she doesn't like that place. But, uh, anyway, uh, awesome. Well, thank you guys for the icebreaker. And we're going to move on. Uh, kind of a preview of the last couple weeks. Our very first week, week one, we had these amazing contestants, and uh, Miss Kelsey survived sadly. And the other two, we hope survived, but we don't know for sure. She got the lifeboat. And last week, Brent Cummings actually got the lifeboat. Uh, we all think it was a pity vote because he couldn't swim. Uh, but funny note, Mr. Postaway um, is a survivor man, avid watcher, and. Uh, you know, Mrs. Higgins actually did a 80 mile canoe trip when she was a teenager. And so that was kind of an interesting fact about surviving, but they still didn't survive. It was Brent that survived. So this week we have um, two amazing contestants, and, or three, excuse me, three amazing <laughs> contestants. One, one, one famous and two amazing, let me put it that way. Uh, and and no, not infamous yet. But, uh, and so I'm going to have. Catherine, explain how this is going to work. Catherine, go ahead and take it from here. Awesome. So imagine this. You are on a cruise ship. You are going to the Caribbean. It's cold. It's kind of miserable. You're not sure what's going on. And COVID-19 hits, so you're stuck on the cruise ship, and then you hit a rock. So the cruise ship is sinking, and there is one place, one spot left on the lifeboat. Why should if why should we hire a Spanish teacher? Why should we put a, a drama teacher in the lifeboat? Why should we put an art teacher in the lifeboat? What do you bring to this lifeboat to make our survival successful? Let's start with Mrs. Mrs. Hessler. <laughs> uh, all right. So reasons why a drama teacher would be a great addition to your lifeboat. With some jazz hands. Um, First of all, I specialize in impromptu situations, so I'm really good at thinking on my feet. Uh, I also, uh, as a teacher, although this is helping Ms. Lockenberg and Mr. Martin as well, uh, I'm very good at um, helping organize situations on the fly because we're constantly put in front of a crowd, an audience, also known as our classes, and we have to think on our feet a lot and help leadership skills come into play, where I'm really good at um, both leading if people need me to lead uh but i'm also a really good follower so if there's someone else in the lifeboat that's like i'm taking charge i'm like you go man and i'm gonna make it happy for you because i am a doer so um 
I would say my impromptu skills. I also have some background knowledge. I was a Girl Scout for many, many years. My brother was a Boy Scout, Eagle Scout, and I was a voluntary Boy Scout for a lot of years. My parents were in the military, so I have a lot of um, that in my upbringing. So I'm just thinking that survival skills, I'm your girl. So woman <laughs> and see. Excellent, thank you very much. Um, Mrs. Laufenberg, why should, why would the arts be beneficial? So it's more than just about the art. If we're in a survival situation, it's about the creative problem solving because that's what we do as artists. We constantly are trying to come up with a solution for any sort of problem, right? And in art, we don't just use, you know, brushes and paint and all that. We use anything to solve our problems. So my toolbox isn't just made up of hammers and nails. I have like everything in my toolbox when it comes to being a teacher and a survivalist. Um, I'm trying to think, we also um, collaborate a lot on, um, you know, artwork and things like that. So I am more than qualified to be able to work with the people that are in my boat so that we can figure out how we could get back to land or if we end up on an island, how are we going to come and get like saved, right? Um, and then I do actually bring to the table some outdoor experience. I've done a lot of backpacking. Um, I grew up as a kid, like living on a lake. I've done a lot of boating. I know how to sail. I know how the wind works. I've done a lot of canoeing, all that kind of stuff. Um, pretty good swimmer. Um, also, we have a fish tank, so I know all about the fish stuff that are in, that's in the water. <laughs> Um, I don't know. I think that's about all I can come up with right now. I can help you out, though. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you so much. Mr. Martin, what do you have to bring to the table? Okay. Well, I have three reasons why I should get the lifeboat. One of them is I'm wearing it on my head. I got the cool hats. Like, you don't understand how much that sun is going to beat down on your head. Well, guess what? This is from Peru. You could either borrow this one or you could even borrow this one, but this will protect your head from getting a sunburn. That's one. Two, actually I have four reasons. Second reason, uh, if you learn a foreign language, it prevents you from getting dementia. You're gonna wanna go nuts on that boat, but guess what? I'll be teaching you a foreign language and that'll prevent you from going crazy because you have to logically think it through. That's two, three, I used to be a history teacher. So you're talking about background knowledge, history teachers, I'm gonna give them some props. They know a lot of stuff and I will teach you that stuff. And last but not least, if you're a fan of workouts with Mr. Martin, guess what I got? <laughs> Workout knowledge. If we get stranded on an island, you're gonna get yoked. You're gonna get so stacked. When you get off that island, you know how people come up castaways? They got the big beard and they lost all this weight. You're going to come off and they're going to be like, wow, you look great. So think about saving me and I'll get you pumped up for that reveal after the island stint. Wow, that was so educational about so many different levels. Do we have any questions from the audience? Yes, I have one while you I have one while you're brainstorming. What how would the three of you use your discipline to solve the conflicts that will inevitably arise in a small lifeboat with multiple people? I'll go. <laughs> um uh so as a drama teacher um, that leads the Fall and Spring Productions, I constantly am organizing massive amounts of people at a lot, a lot uh, at one time. And so I think one, I have a huge, it took me a long time to learn this, but I know how to delegate, which I think would be really helpful to make everyone feel useful and be able to bring their skills to the table so everyone's a part of the team. Um, two, conflict resolution, because 
we work with teenagers, I'm pretty darn good at it at this point. I'm also an excellent listener. So if sometimes people just need to vent. Now we have a small confined space. So I also um, know a lot of games and like ways to keep, them, keep us entertained as we're working our way toward land um, on, our, on our boat. So um, uh, I think we could do a lot of physical activity as well as uh, mental challenges to keep us engaged and ready to go. So I think with those skills, I could really do well in your lifeboat. Excellent, thank you. Mrs. Hoffenberg. Wow, well, I was thinking just about the collaborative skills that I have fine-tuned over the 20 years of teaching that I've done um, and letting everyone, you know, put out their ideas and then, as together, then together as a group, we figure out what's going to be the best possible solution. So definitely getting everybody involved and then coming up with like what's going to work the best. I would also add, we do a lot of trial and error. So you can try one thing. If it doesn't work, that's okay. Us artists, we know how to handle that. We just try again, right? And we try something else, doesn't work. That's okay. Try again, right? So it's all about the trial and error. And I can help everyone in that lifeboat get through that experience of trial and error. Thank you. Okay, I got two, um, two things. When it comes to conflict, conflict resolution, it's fight or flight. Well, guess what? I brought my boxing gloves. So if you guys wanna duke it out, I'll be the ref. I have some experience, nobody will get hurt, but eventually you guys will be like, all right, Let's just get on the same page. But if you're also in the flight mode, shoe reveal, I brought my running shoes. You can borrow my shoes and take a run around the island. And by the time you get back, you won't even want to fight because you'll be too darn tired and you'll look great. There's also questions in the chat box there. Uh, the next question is, if you compare yourself to an animal, who would you be and why? I have an excellent answer for this. Um, <laughs> uh, so this is for a different episode, but I actually took a class in college called Animals. Um, and it was an acting class. So I have a degree in, in acting as well as in teaching. And uh, I don't know how to tell you this without sounding crazy. And we're going to go on a spinoff tangent. I won't let you take me down this road. But we literally had to pick an animal, a predator, and um, study it. And then we actually crawled around on our hands and knees for a semester in the woods, um, uh, tracking each other. And ha we had like make babies that we had to carry around our mouths. We weren't allowed to talk. Uh, and we like growled at each other and like to kill each other, we like tackled each other in the woods. I have scars. So my animal was an ocelot, which is like a leopard a small leopard. Um, and I went and studied it at the zoo in Seattle and she was very cool. And um, they are great predators. And they, um, so I actually have <laughs> quite literal experience of, of what it means to be an animal and to really tap into those fight or flight resources. Um, so I have some experience I bring to the table. So I would relate to an ocelot and um, they are very cool predatorial little cats. Uh, the Americas. I feel like that class might also be something that could help you on an island because you know how to be an animal. Hmm. Yes. I, I mean, we had to learn how to hunt and how to avoid predators that were bigger than us, AKA like other humans that were larger than us and uh, how to respect territory, but also like defend your own. So it was, it was quite an experience that I would bring to the island should we make it to one, which we will because I'll be in the lifeboat, so. <laughs> Thank you very much. Mrs. Laufenberg. So I did one of those online surveys one time to figure out what your spirit animal is. And Ooh. my spirit animal is an owl which I'm like, I knew that already, right? Because we have owls here around Walla Walla. And uh, I like to bike around, like out, like into the, you know, out into the Tuleys. And I, for a long time, every time I was out on a ride, 
an owl would like, I, I don't, they, you know how like along the roads, there's like those um, kind of big cliffs with holes in them where all the birds live. Well, and some of them owls live in there and I would like, I'd be on a ride and all of a sudden an owl would like come shooting out of one of those big sides of the cliff. Anyway, so the, I think um, my best bet is an owl. And I think what comes with an owl is the wisdom of an owl, right? Um, however, I would also throw in there, um, our family, we talk a lot of times about like what animal we'd want to be. And we have two dogs and we always, um, it, and our, we have a neighbor cat that sort of owns us as a family. And we kind of go back and forth between wanting to be the cat or the dog. And I definitely would want to be a dog. Um, I think dogs are like, they have intelligence and they're survivors and they can be predators. Like they, I don't know, both of our dogs are super smart dogs and like figure their way out of stuff. We have one dog who she will like take off on us. And we have no idea where she is. And then we'll be out looking for her everywhere. And we come back and she's like sitting by the door. <laughs> what the heck? But so brilliant, right? So I think an owl dog would be the best, the best way to go for me. That's what I could offer. <laughs> okay, mine is, that's, I don't know. I My favorite animal is a sloth. Because I saw one in Costa Rica and it was awesome and amazing. But I don't know if that's really going to help us on the lifeboat, except for I'll just move slowly about the boat and you'll be able to predict my moves and I won't be able to sneak up on you. So that might be good, I guess. Any other questions from students? Do you guys have questions you want to ask or type in the chat box? Or... or or Mr. Jones, you can ask questions too, since you look so epic there. No questions. How would you feed the lifeboat? It's an excellent question. Uh, Catherine, thank you for bringing that to our attention. We do need to eat. Um, I would say I grew up fishing would probably be our best bet. And so learning um, how to, I've been watching a lot of uh, Bear Grylls, <laughs> Man versus Wild, as well as Naked and Afraid. So I actually have some, uh, some thoughts on the best way to catch our fish, um, depending on what supplies we were able to get into our lifeboat um, and how to either hopefully, ha I mean, how convenient it would be to have uh, lures and hooks and line um, and potentially even rods. But um, being able to potentially think on our feet as well on how we would get some fish in the boat. Um, also, depending on how deep we were, if we were in more shallow water, perhaps looking for things like mussels and clams um, would be helpful while we were still in our lifeboat. And then if uh, we would get to an island, being able to forage for food uh, as well, I think would be good. And I think breaking us into teams for our skill sets, depending on who is in the lifeboat with us, um, you know, you have your basic hunters and gatherers situation. So kind of getting people on both sides um, and utilizing the skills that people bring to the table, whether they've had experience in hunting and fishing um, or, or not so much. Um, but I have a lot of people who are like my green club kids who are like, yes, let's go find some berries. So I think uh, I would utilize the skill set of the group um, and yeah, and, and uh, assess the situation accordingly. I can go next. I watch uh, YouTube and you know what? I, I don't fish that well, but I've seen on YouTube where they catch the fish with their arm through the fin. I think it's called noodling dink. I can do that. I'm pretty sure I can do that. And if that doesn't work, like I said, I'm bringing my weight. So I'm telling you that fish doesn't stand a chance when you got that thing hanging up over it. So anyway, Oh, come on. Oh, I'm getting there. Oh, there I am. Okay, I got it. Um, so I, too, grew up fishing. I know a lot about it. I've been to a lot of different um, lakes, mainly. But, um, you know, so I know how to catch fish. I think my tactic would probably be, once we're in that boat, we'd probably 
focus on trying to get to an island because if you can get to an island, then you can figure out, um, you know, you can, we can figure out what plants are edible. We can, um, you know, make tools to, um, to like hunt with. Um, we can, you know, I mean, I'm a hiker, so I'd be more than happy to walk all over the island to try and find any kind of edible food. Um, so that would probably be my tactic is to like, let's get to that island and then we can look for food. Awesome. Uh, are you guys hunters or gatherers in your, your skill sets? I am going to take a third option. And I think oh. that if I am, if I've been elected the leader of the crew, that I'm much more of a delegator that I think one of the people's biggest problems is they all leave at the same time and there's no one kind of running camp. Um, and so making sure that everybody's got jobs and feels useful and things like that. And so instead of running off with a crew, I think I would try and make sure that everybody um, was using their skill set to the best of your ability. So you got your fire starters and stuff still maybe working on how to cook, maybe you got your shelter builders, you got your hunters, you got your gatherers. So I'd be trying to make sure that all of that was moving, moving smoothly. Um, if that is not an option that you accept, I uh, have a little bit of both. Um, my parents, uh, and brother are both are all uh, hunters. And so I grew up eating mostly wild meat. Um, I never really had, I mean, I eat beef, but I mostly had deer burger when I was growing up as a kid um, and a lot of wild game like fish and turkey and pheasant and dove and all of that. And so I have um, that skill set. I have, uh, this is maybe a non-popular opinion, but I don't have an issue with shooting a gun, um, but I, <laughs> don't hunt because I don't like to get up at four in the morning. <laughs> so I sleep. Um, I also have fished, but also I, I don't mind being a, a berry gatherer or going out and digging in the dirt and things like that, getting my hands dirty, um, looking for stuff. So I'm, I'm cool with, with whatever the group needs, depending on who we bring to the table already. Um, I would say that I am, I would, if I can go third option too, I would probably go third option because I like to cook. So I'm telling you guys, when you have somebody on the island that knows how to cook, especially with some of them like delicious island tropical fruits and coconut milk, I can throw something together, guys. I'm telling you, it's going to taste good. That's all I can say. I don't know about the hunting, the gathering, whatever. <laughs> Give it to me. I'll go in the kitchen over the fire pit or wherever we're going to be cooking. And I'll prepare some good stuff. You you won't be disappointed. Something different every day. So I'd say I'm both. And I'm not a third option. I am both a hunter and a gatherer. Because as an art teacher, we collect and collect and collect. And then we figure out what to do with what we have, right? And make the, make like magic with what we've found, right? But I do love meat. I absolutely love meat. I didn't grow up with a family that was hunters, but but at some point I'm gonna want to eat some flesh, <laughs> not the human kind, of course. <laughs> but but I'd be willing <laughs> to um, you know create some weapons and go on a big old hunt. I also I have a husband who's a a cook. He's a, been a chef for like over 20 years. So I know a lot about cooking from working with him in the kitchen. Um, so we could fix up something good for all you guys for sure. But hunt and gather. Yes. Thank you. For our last question before we vote, can each of you give us a catchphrase for why you should be in the lifeboat? Mr. Martin, you're first. <laughs> but you have to unmute. <laughs> my catchphrase, did I just, I, I, I pinned myself. My catchphrase is this, it's Cinco de Mayo. I'm wearing my Mexico oh. soccer jersey and I'm Mexican. I think you should vote for me for, the, for this special holiday. That's my catchphrase. <laughs> Thank you. Mrs. Laufenberg. Uh, I'm gonna say I'm the jack of all trades. 
I can figure out how to get us out of that boat, and I can figure out how for us to stay alive. Jack of all trades right here. Excellent. Um, <laughs> my brain is whirling. The first thing that came to my head is my Spencer, or Spencer, my husband, who worked at, works at Lincoln, calls his, uh, his athletic teams, his Hustlers Hustlers. Um, and I think that we would hustle our way to uh, survival, which is, that's it. That's what I'm going to say with Hessler's Hustlers. Excellent. Thank you so much. So if you would like to vote for our to our Mexican on Cinco de Mayo, our Jack of all trades, our uh, Hessler's Hustlers, please put your vote in the chat. So like a one for... One for Mr. Martin, two for Mrs. Laufenberg, and three for Mrs. Keller, Hustler. The Hustlers. All right. There you go. And we, uh, Mr. Jones, looks like you need to be. Oh, there we go. Okay, we got it. That right. was not a tie break. Okay. Well, um, do we have a winner officially? I believe that what was just decided is that Mr. Martin's right leg is going to be allowed in the lifeboat and his left leg is going to have to float. And Mrs. <laughs> Hessler's left leg will be allowed in the lifeboat. She'll just kind of be tipping off. And Mrs. Laufenberg has to find a piece of scrap metal to float on. <laughs> We're all in the lifeboat. <laughs> <Yeah>! <laughs> Amazing. Well, Thank you guys for joining us for Lifeboat this week. We're going to be meeting again next uh, Tuesday at 1 o'clock. And I'm excited. I haven't figured out everyone that's going to be on next week, but it's going to be exciting. And uh, thank you guys, teachers all so much again for joining us and students. So have a great week, you guys, and uh, see you soon. Bye. All right, you too. Bye. Bye, guys. Thank you.